Hey everybody, Mr. Macintosh here, and I've got some exciting news. Mac OS Monterey can now run inside of a virtual machine on an Apple Silicon M1 Mac for the first time ever. Windows 10 ARM Edition was one of the first ones in early December to be able to do this, and everybody was asking, why can't I virtualize Mac OS on an M1? But the time has now come. Apple has added new virtualization framework to the latest version of Mac OS Monterey Beta, and now we can do it. I'm going to walk you through the entire process of how to set up the VM and install it and start it up so you can test it out on your own. We've got a lot to cover. Let's jump in and get started. Okay, first off, let's give credit to the person who put this code together in Swift, Chaos T. Now, if he sounds familiar to you, he is because he was one of the first people to put together ACVM for the Windows 10 ARM Edition video that I put together to let us run Windows 10 on an M1 Mac. So he's back with the latest code. Now, the next person we wanna to talk to about is Ming. He put together this code that allows us to be able to put it into a GUI for us to be able to manage the virtual machine. He put this code as a fork of the original code to help others get this together for testing. So he was able to do that. And then Martin Noble was able to put together a really cool video in how the performance was. Now let's talk about the requirements and what you are going to need to be able to run Mac OS Monterey on an M1 Mac. First of all, you have to be running Mac OS Monterey Beta 2 or higher on your M1 Mac that you want to be able to do this on. The next thing you're going to need is Xcode 13 beta. You can't use the regular Xcode because this is built with the new framework. You are also going to need Apple Configurator 2 app from the App Store. You can download that and I'm going to include links in the description for all these pieces that you're going to need. You're also going to need a Mac OS 12 IPSW restore file that was recently just released by Apple. And you're also going to need to create an empty DMG with disk utility to act is the storage for the VM. Now that we had that, let's get started building the VM. Okay, now let's talk about the first time setup. The first thing we're gonna need to do is go to the Mac OS Virtual Machine GitHub page, clone, and download the zip of the Xcode project. So on this page, all you need to do is go to the code button, click here, and click download zip. It's gonna go right into your downloads folder down here. And as you can see, we've got our folder here with the zip. So now that we have that, the next thing we need is Xcode 13 beta. The way to get that is you have to have a developer account to be able to download or a public beta account to be able to download the latest version of Xcode 13 beta. So when you're on the beta software page, this is what it's going to look like and you'll see Xcode 13 beta 2. Click that download button, it'll go down to your downloads folder and here's that Xcode 13 XIP file. Now that we have that, you want to unzip the Xcode and install it. When you're done, it's going to be in your applications folder and it's going to have the beta. See, I have both versions of Xcode installed, the prod version and the beta version. You can see it's got the beta. This is the one we're going to need. Now that we have Xcode beta installed, we're ready to go to the next step. Now we need Apple Configurator 2. All we needed to go to do is go to the App Store and type in Apple Configurator 2. And download the Apple Configurator 2. It'll say download, and it'll be, and then you can click open, and it'll look like this. This is Apple Configurator 2 application. So now that we have Apple Configurator 2, now we need the Mac OS 12 full installer IPSW file to help us restore and install Mac OS Monterey into the VM. And this is used to install Mac OS Monterey into the virtual machine. So to get that, I've got my site here that is an inventory or a database of all the IPSW files ever released by Apple, and they're all direct links to Apple's download server. So if we scroll all the way down to the bottom here, we can find our Mac OS Monterey IPSW files, and all you need to do is click on this, and it'll download you right into the downloads folder, and that's about 12.8 gigabytes in size. So now that we have that, we have to get our empty DMG file to be able to act as our storage for the virtual machine. To create that, all we need to do is open up Disk Utility. And to create an empty disk image, all we need to do is go up to the file menu, go to new image, blank image, and then we can name it disk. And then the name also is disk. And then for the size, depending on the size of your hard drive, um, 
anywhere between 60 to 150 gigabytes, depending on what you're gonna do, is whatever you're gonna need for the size of the VM. So for, for this machine, I'll just make it 60 gigabytes, so 60,000 megabytes uh, for a nice starter, just for a test. And when we're done, we'll save it to the desktop. Hit save, and it's going to create a disk image that is empty that is 60 gigabytes in size. So we'll give this a second here. Okay, the operation is successful, and we should see it on the desktop. Let's take a look, and there's our disk, and there's our disk image.dmg. Okay, now that we have all those pieces, we can start to actually build the VM now. So we already cloned that project downloads folder. So let's open up our downloads folder to see what we have in here. So this is what the folder will look like when we downloaded the project. We have to open this up and then go into that folder. And then this is what we have to open up. This is the Xcode project. So right click on this or control click and then open with Xcode beta. Now, if you only have Xcode beta in here, it'll default to that. But if you have two versions, you can see one's default and one's not. So we'll make sure that we open it up in Xcode 13 beta. And we'll get this. this is the first time that we've opened it. We can open and trust it. Okay, this is the first screen that you're going to see when you open up the virtual machine in Xcode. And you can highlight the Xcode, the macOS virtual machine project, and see all the information on there. So the next thing we're going to need to do is we're going to have to click the button to build the VM into the container. So let's click build. And you can see the progress up here. We're step two, and it's going to take a little bit, probably anywhere between 10 and 25 seconds to build out here. And it's attaching, running, and there we go. So this is the virtual machine box that we're going to use. But the next step is we actually have to close the virtual machine. So you can see the virtual machine is up here in the menu bar. We're going to click on it and click close virtual machine. Now it's closed. Now the next thing we need to do is we have to move that disk DMG that we had into the apps container. To find that container folder location, we need to click on the desktop and we need to go to our user library folder. Click on go and then hold on the option key and you'll see library appear there. Click on that. Now we're in our user library and we need to go in, into the containers folder. So scroll down here to containers, go into here. Then we need to go into Mac OS virtual machine just created now and here's our data folder. Inside the data folder is where we need to put that disk.dmg. So let's go back to the desktop here and we see that disk dmg we can drag that over here and hold down command to move it and now it's in the container and as you can see it's 60 gigabytes so that part is done now we're going to run the virtual machine again so we'll go back to the xcode window and we'll click play to run it again and the app will open you'll see it uh, bouncing up and down the desktop now and now the way it's set up is it's putting the virtual machine into a dfu mode so we can restore mac os monterey to it or install it so now to see that we can open up apple configurator 2 and look at that we see a virtual machine virtual mac in dfu mode so it's ready for restore now all we need to do is go back to our, our downloads folder and remember that full ipsw we file we downloaded from my website we're going to take that and drag that over here to the apple configurator 2 let go and we'll see hey do you want to install the system version mac os monterey to this virtual mac yes we do we want to click restore and there it goes, it's gonna start. Now to watch this process, it's probably gonna take anywhere between five and 10 minutes for the full installation. Now what we can do is we can open up Activity Monitor and we can click on Disk to see the disk activity once it starts copying the files over to, and there you go, 672 megabytes a second copy speed. And that's gonna fluctuate between that high and all the way down to maybe 15 megabytes, depending where it is on the install. So you can see it's on the install installing system process now and you can actually click on here and show the activity from the window and you can see the activity of restoring the system to the virtual mac right here we can watch that happen here so we'll be back in a second when this is all done okay we just finished and it was switching over on apple configurator 2 to the virtual mac and look at this it's firing up and there we are at the language selection screen how cool is that 
Okay, now that we have our VM built, let's go over some of the settings and the controls here. Remember, I wanna set some expectations here. This is the very first version of a virtual machine that's ever been created for the M1 and Mac OS. So there's no basic controls just yet, but as we speak, most likely there's going to be a another GUI control type of a interface that will come out somewhere in the future and then Parallels and VMware will get on board to be able to get Mac OS in their virtual machine software too. So again, it'll be a little bit slow as it acts, but to be honest with you, it's not that bad. This is a Mac mini with 16 gigabytes of RAM and the virtual machine right now is hard coded in the code to run about eight gigs of RAM. So as long as you have 16 gigs, it doesn't run too bad. Now, if you have eight gigs on your MacBook Air, for example, it's gonna run a little bit slower. So let's go through this setup assistant real quick and I'll create a test account. And once we're on the desktop, I'll show you some of the controls. Okay, now that we're on the desktop, we can talk about some basic controls. The good thing is, is that this window is fully resizable. You can move it all the way big and you can also click full screen. So you can go full screen app here and then to get out of it, just bring your cursor up here and then click on the green again and you're back to a windowed area. As soon as you give in, give it a couple minutes to run its spotlight indexing check and a couple other system tasks, then, then it'll quicken up a little bit. Like if you try to open up Safari or system preferences when it first starts, it'll be slow so let's see how fast it loads now and now that I gave it a minute or two it opens up almost immediately we can click on displays it opens up pretty quick we can go back into users and groups goes up pretty quickly here too not bad let's go back out and open it again so it looks like once you do the task it goes pretty quick, but once you open up a new one, it takes a second or two to be able to go into that new pane, as you can see. So it takes a second to go into sound. We'll go back out, and then it goes almost immediately into sound. So again, let's go back to the networking. The Wi-Fi is disabled, but you have full bridge networking through your Wi-Fi connection on your main host Mac. So that works really well. Uh, for displays, we have a fixed display, so that's not able to be changed right now, but it, it does scale with the size of the window when you move it back and forth and that works pretty smooth so when we go back out and we can open up safari here and once the page loads we can maybe try a website like apple.com see how fast that loads it's taking a second or two and it looks like it needed to finish this privacy report before and then it's then it's not loading too bad here this is decent speed going through these different sections here so that's not bad Let's talk about if you wanted to transfer files between your virtual machine and your desktop. You can do that. You can't drag and drop like you can with Parallels or VMware, but we can do it through file sharing. So what we need to do is go back into our system preferences on our host machine, go into sharing, turn on file sharing here, and you can see we can share out our public folder. We can close out of there. Then we can go into the Finder. And if you don't have Macintosh hard drive on the desktop, you can just go into Finder here, go to Preferences and click on Hard Disks. Go into Finder or obviously click on Finder down here. And then once this window opens, you can see Network here. So we can click on Network and then here we go. Here's our Mac Mini. All you need to do is double click on that and then hit Connect As and hit Connect and type in the password and we've got full access to our main host Mac. And we can click on the desktop here. And we can drag, let's see, let's try to drag this screenshot over here. There we go. So that's transferring files and we can actually transfer them back too. So that we can make a new folder here and we can transfer this new folder back to the Mac. And there we go. So those are some basic controls for the VM. And the final thing is if you want to shut it down, all you need to do is go up to Apple and click shut down and it'll shut down the VM. And that's it. Once it's closed, you see that it disappears from Apple Configurator 2. Now, if you wanted to start it up again, all you need to do is go back to the Xcode and make sure that the virtual machine's highlighted and click the play button. It'll open up the virtual machine window again, give it a second or two, and macOS will start back up. There it is. 
So there we have it, a Mac OS Monterey running in a virtual machine on M1. I'm very excited to see what the developers like Chaos and Ming will do with this virtual machine in the future here. And if they do have any updates, I'll put them in the description. And hopefully Parallels and VMware are also working on their own virtual machine to be able to run Mac OS inside a virtual machine in their software too. I hope this video created value for you and you were able to test this out and it worked. If you have any questions, put them in the comments and I'll give you a hand. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more videos like this in the future, click on that subscribe button. And if you're already a subscriber, I really, truly appreciate it. And we'll catch you in the next one. Thank you.